he's gets not shit done. grimacing in pain. He's like, this shit hurts. There's I like a, it. There's a mindset of those people though that can do those ultra marathons. That's a different world inside your dome, man. You're yeah. You got some darkness in there. You're trying to. Th what was that woman that smashed all of them? Courtney DeWalter. Yeah, she's, she's a on teacher, the podcast. Right? Yeah, isn't she? A did teacher? you listen to the podcast? I did she was not, on? She's no. amazing. She eats nachos, and drinks beer, eats candy. She's eating candy when she's hanging out with us. But what's going on in her brain, man? <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see a CT scan. She's a straight up savage. I'll tell you what. How she was she telling us going? about how she had some sort of retina edema where she was almost blind because uh, her contacts fucked up or something like that and her 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 eyeballs were bleeding and she couldn't see and she fell cracked her fucking head open like like blood pouring down her head still one couldn't see couldn't see where her feet were while she was running her brain cannot be the same it's as, not no. she's just tough there's there's mental toughness that some people have that is almost unexplainable like yeah. you don't like what makes them that tough? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. The ability to block out all the negative voices, the stop yeah. voices. I mean, well, think about personalities, right? Like a personality like Bert yeah. that would be the life of the party. Right. That's not me. I'm no. not that guy. No. I've never been that guy. It's right. A, I, I mean, I can, I can. If we're all hanging around together, we're all drinking. I can make everybody laugh. Yeah. I could be silly. And we could all have a good have time fun, together. Yeah. But I don't gravitate towards that thinking, that kind of behavior. Right. Whereas Bert can walk into a liquor store and have everybody sing along to "I Would yeah. Die for You." Yeah, yeah. He's got his phone out and people are dancing and. Yeah, it's it's a genuine personality type. Yeah, that's who he is. That's his personality type. Some people have that personality type where they'll get up at four thirty in the morning and you know it's dark outside and they relish the fact that they don't want to put their running shoes on. And they don't want to hit that mountain and run. They relish the fact that they're they're going to struggle. They mm -hmm. like it. They, they like, like it. Yeah. They like the pain. They like the the stinging of the 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 lungs as their your lungs struggle to fill with air. They like it. <sighs> yeah. True. Yeah. They like also the fact that other people can't do what they can do. They like the fact that there's people that are in bed that, that are comfortably asleep while they're out there doing it, and it gives them an edge. Sure. Yeah. Well, what what makes a person's personality to be this outgoing extrovert like Burt Kreischer. What makes that stoic individual that can sit and go over, you know, uh, you know like an accountant who can just sit and, and go over things for hours and hours, uh, a coder, someone who could sit in front of a computer and go over 10, 12 hours a day's worth of computer It's a certain code. mindset, yeah. It's a different kind of human, yeah. right? Yeah, because that, I mean, I, both of those personalities I could never entertain, you know, yeah. just so far from what i am i'm fascinated by personalities yeah i i just find I, I, and there's so many variables like as to what makes a person who they are and and how it changes over time and who yeah. who you are the more you consider yourself and like i did a podcast yesterday uh about meditation it was all about meditation mm -hmm. with uh, dan harris from good morning america who's a big proponent of meditation and um this guy Jeff Warren, who uh, wrote this book, uh, Head Trip, a very, very interesting guy, who was his meditation teacher. And mm -hmm. We're just talking about thought processes and, and the, the, the mind and, and managing the mind and managing the way you do things, don't do things, and how much of these little weird kinks and pitfalls can just trip you up and fuck you up in your life. Like, imagine Louis C.K. without this desire to beat off in front of women. Like, let's say he did that 10 times in his whole life. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you could get to him before those 10 times and go, hey man look you're a real nice guy you've always been like friendly to people you give good advice as a comedian just you can't beat off in front of people yeah we got it's gonna cost you like 50 million dollars one day yeah like, what yeah you think so yeah. yeah yeah one day it's gonna cost you 50 million dollars if you just beat off in front of people no one's gonna work with you so just don't do that yeah don't yeah. do that or here's what you could do pay a hooker and say i want to beat off in front of you and she'll go okay and then you give her a thousand bucks or whatever it costs and you beat off in front of her. You could do that. And he'd be like, mm, that's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, but like, what would make a person, what makes a person tick really? Yeah. What, what, what is it inside your head? Like it's all your experiences really that become your personality. I think you there's know? that there's your experiences. There's managing your particular biology. Yeah. You know, there's so many, so many different things. Yeah, because like you, you're at the age now too where you can see like with your children. Do you ever see how 
they're a certain age now, but you go like, I saw that trait in you when you were one. Oh yeah. Two, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you see like the stuff that's natural in someone, mm -hmm. the, the natural personality trait. And then you sprinkle life on top of that starts to develop who the person becomes. Well, your son is probably just now starting to talk. And yep. Yeah. You, you'll start to have a little conversation with them and then you'll start to see you in them. And that's where it gets really weird. You're really? Like, oh no, you've inherited all my craziness. You see that in your kids? My nine-year-old in particular. Really? She's got a lot of my crazy in her. Yeah. And you, you, you totally see yourself. You're oh like, yeah. Oh. She gets obsessed with things. Like yeah. obsessed. Where she just, she'll just do them like all day long. Like mm -hmm. we went on a vacation and we were walking back from the resort. She did uh, cartwheels all the way back from the resort to to the room. Mm -hmm. It was a half mile. So fucking like she just did cartwheels, cartwheels. over and over and over again. She just gets nuts about stuff. Is it the kind of thing where you're like, hey, you should probably stop doing that? Or no? no, let her do it. Just like, let her do it. I don't. I don't. I think as long as your kids aren't hurting themselves and hurting other people. The more you say, hey, don't do that, the more they're going to want to do that. Sure. It's, just, it's, it's, natural. it's natural. Yeah. What I try to do is encourage healthy things. That's it. Mm -hmm. I try to, like, when it comes to, like, candy and sugar and stuff like that, I try to tell them, yeah, it tastes great. It tastes amazing. But you're really only supposed to have a little bit of it for your – just it's bad for your body. You know, I don't, I don't just give them this, hey, you can't eat candy. Yeah. Hey, you can't do that. I'm like, a little bit's good. A little bit's fine. Let's yeah. have a little bit. Let's enjoy it. But let's understand what it is. Like, let's be aware of what it is. Mm -hmm. But don't be afraid of it. Don't run from it. Don't, you know. Yeah. Nobody died because they had an ice cream once a week. Sure. You know, it's not going to hurt you. Just don't have it every fucking night. Yeah, just don't yeah. get crazy. Don't let it become a part of everything who you are. And one of the things that I do the most, though, is encourage them. Like, what are they, what do they enjoy doing? Like, mm -hmm. what do you enjoy doing? You know, like, my youngest one loves art. Loves to draw, loves it. Just constantly drawing. That's awesome. And I'm like, let's draw. Let's let's look. Fuck. Let's do some art. It's fun. It's like there's something like find out whatever it is where where you can find this avenue for expression, and and I want to encourage that as much as I can because I feel like if there's anything in this life that'll guarantee you some satisfaction or some feeling of accomplishment or some some uh, some way to fuel your passions it's find something that really hits your switches find that thing like you found it right you found it with stand-up yeah totally i mean but you imagine doing something else other than stand-up no of course not i mean at this point i don't know i tell people that all the time actually it's like that's the thing you become aware of i think when you get older you're like i'm so lucky that i do the thing i really like doing the most yeah that's really the thing and then you meet people like you ever, I, mean, I meet people all the time but like i talk to people who you know i'm just not happy with what they're just like i'm not happy with my life and this and that i'm like what is it you really want to do and they go, i don't know like, re like real question real question if yeah. somebody wanted to trade lives jeff bezos wanted to trade lives you get to be jeff bezos you get 105 billion dollars but you can't do stand up anymore no, because I, I no love way. I love it. Yeah, that's ho it. so hard for people to imagine. Yeah, that. well, no, because like I mean that that I know that sounds like a comical amount of money, and that like who the fuck would turn that down? But it's like I don't really feel like I'm turning something down because I have I get so much pleasure and and joy out of doing what I do. So Could you imagine so if you made that deal and you came back to the comedy store and you were watching somebody just kill, oh, and you'd yeah. be like, "Fuck, I want to go up." And they're like, no, nah, man, you got to take your spaceship home now. <laughs> and you're sitting around writing things down when yeah. you think they're funny and you never just get to Just giving it, it to people. You take yeah. it. See if you can make it work.